I didn't want anyone to feel sorry for me. I had never been so scared in my life. I wasn't even that scared when I was in Iraq. I can know what it's like to get to the point where you no longer want to live. Most of my veterans go through a metamorphosis where they are reborn. I felt alive again for the first time. Get out of the way, Monty Roberts! Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is persevering in spite of fear. I think it's, it's possible. I think it's doable. And I think I'm seeing it happen. No violence and freedom of choice. Those are the critical overriding issues that you must establish in a relationship with a horse or a human. He's known as the man who listens to horses. A best-selling author and award-winning trainer of championship horses, Monty Roberts is a legend in the horse world, a real-life horse whisperer. Working with horses, a flight animal, who wants no violence in their lives at all, um, and who everybody knows can't lie. Horses can't lie. They cannot lie. They just tell it like it is on the moment. The son of a once well-respected horse trainer, this four-time world champion rider seemed to have it all at a young age, but he had a secret. I never really had a childhood. My father was uh, extremely violent with me. I had 72 broken bones before I was 12 years of age. And it wasn't the broken bones nearly as much as it was the stealing of a child's mind. And yet I had an eighth grade teacher that really helped me come back and get real and, and to take victim off the list and become proactive against uh, violence toward children and horses too. Monty, along with another celebrated horse whisperer, Buck Branneman, are part of the natural horsemanship movement. Both are largely responsible for bringing an end to violent and abusive training methods like these. And everybody that I've shown this to tends to hate these people, but they're just doing what they were taught. They're just doing what their father did and their grandfather did. The teasing of these horses is to get them to fight and then not get anything from the fighting so that they give up, literally give up. Remind yourself that just last week you couldn't put the halter on the head of this horse and it might not be easy to do today. My philosophy behind how I train horses is no violence. Run a line through that word. There will be no violence. Freedom of choice, trust, and picnic. P-I-C, N-I-C. Positive instant consequences and negative instant consequences. I believe it works for children too. When you see positive actions, you must follow them with positive consequences. I never had that in my life. Monty's work is rooted in a revolutionary nonviolent training technique that he created called Join Up. Join Up is a, a moment, really, defined as a moment when the horse chooses to come to you instead of going away from you. And they're flight animals. They want to go away from a predator, and we are predators, whether we like it or not. So Join Up is that philosophy whereby the horse has freedom of choice. And with the use of their language, you engender trust. When they trust you, they will migrate toward you instead of going away. And that's what join up is all about. Now I'll turn and bring him back the other way to show you that it's not a coincidence. Ah, a boy. His methods are hugely successful. His family's estate in Santa Inez Valley, California has been turning out championship horses for decades. 
It's also a place of rehabilitation for troubled and sometimes dangerous cases. King Alchemist was so bad, he was trying to kill people. And they, they were just about to send him off to the butcher. Today, at age 76, Monty Roberts is showing no signs of slowing down. If there's ever a chance to be on God's team creating life, I think number one is to work with veterans who've given up on life and whom, if you get it right, you can give life back to. I think it's, it's possible. I think it's doable. And I think I'm seeing it happen. And wait for him. It's called Horses for Veterans, a three-day intensive program designed to help veterans of all ages suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Working with horses, a flight animal, and flight is PTSD. You know, they're frightened of everything that they don't understand. If they don't trust it, it's a killer, and they need to get away from it. And that's how a veteran views it, too. The program, which is free for veterans, allows each person a chance to learn Monty's join-up method by working the horses through a variety of exercises. Veterans learn how to gain the horse's trust and cooperation without using force. Group discussions and one-on-one -on -one meetings with Monty are also a critical part of the program. I've been married now for 20 years, but it's taken my wife you know, five or seven years before she could touch me if I was asleep, and even today she announces before she walks into a room, you know. Step in front, step in front, good. And send him, send him, stay alive. It's a lot of fun. There you go. It's a huge amount of fun. The agenda is pretty loose. We have some, some games they play with horses. We have some uh, challenges for them. We have a lot of these conversations where they get to know what I want. Um, I empower them to go out and try to help future groups coming in. One of those returning veterans is Alejandra Sanchez. This is her fourth visit to Flag is Up Farms, but she remembers her first visit like it was yesterday. I was so scared. I had never been so scared in my life. I wasn't even that scared when I was in Iraq. Back then I didn't feel fear. Now I felt fear. It was as if all the fear I had never ever felt in my entire life, I have now either given permission to feel or my body just said, now we're gonna feel it. I don't know, but I felt it. I felt it in my skin. I felt it in everything. My anxiety was just through the roof because I had a face that I had PTSD. Alejandra was one of just two women in her unit in Iraq. Every night you knew, once, you know, once sunset, it was, action was gonna happen. I remember um, really coming to like oddly weird terms of like, I might not make it. As part of this weekend, Monty asked Alejandra to share her story with the first timers, an exercise meant to help her as much as her fellow veterans. That first day that Alejandra started to talk to the veterans, I thought was going to be disappointing because she said, I'm not in a very talkative mood today. And I'm thinking, holy moly, if she's not in a talkative mood, they're not going to get much from her, you know. And she wasn't in a very talkative mood. And that's okay. She's honest, really honest. She's like a horse, really. And so I kind of took the reins a little bit and asked her some questions. And then a couple of guys asked her questions. And the next thing you know, she was telling them everything. And it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. And I kept swearing that I was fine. And I would scream, wake up screaming in the middle of the night, waking up my whole family, and oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And you know, I couldn't have people walk behind me, but I'm fine. I had all these symptoms, but I was fine. She's not in the mood to talk. <laughs> You're gonna have to work with people you don't know, and already you have trust issues, and uh, it it definitely brought out all my symptoms that I currently face, but in an intensity level much higher than I normally dealt with, which in the end was probably good, because I had to learn to calm myself down for the horses to respond to me. 
the horse would not respond to me if I was anxious, if I was angry, if I was violent. <laughs> I can know what it's like to get to the point where you no longer want to live. Retired Air Force Staff Sergeant Alicia Watkins isn't big on complaining. I don't tell anybody what it's like. I think that it's hard to tell people what it's like when you're not healed yet. And so there's a lot of things that I've gone through that I have yet to share with anybody. I was stationed at the Pentagon during 9-11. I thank God that I wasn't where I usually am at that time. I remember watching what was going on in New York um, on a TV, and I remember saying, just like it was out of a movie, like, I'm getting out of here because we're next. And after that, it's pretty much a, a blur. While Alicia survived, one of her closest friends, Staff Sergeant Tamara Thurman, did not. It, there was a lot of, of people that I lost that day. Um, someone very close to me, that was Sergeant Thurman, along with several other people um, that I've known in passing and that um, we worked together. And then to hear about all the casualties and all the horrific stories in the World Trade Center, it's, um, it, it's hard. It, it's definitely hard. After September 11, 2001, Alicia deployed to Afghanistan, then later to Iraq. I think we all were, were gung-ho. I, I, I felt like it was the least that we could do. If our commander-in-chief at that time wanted us to go to war, then that's what we were going to do. Afghanistan, in a, in a nutshell, was horrible. Every day of the, <laughs> every day of the week, because of my job, um, both before and after, I was constantly on the road and constantly involved in or nearby, you know, IUD attacks. I remember going on convoys, and I remember not being able to handle it. I came back in 07, and I'd had so many life, um, life or death experiences, and God had brought me out of so many dangerous places and near-death experiences. And only when you get into a place where you've had your life flash before your eyes so many times do you realize what is really important and who is really important. I isolated myself from everybody family, um, friends, because they wanted the old Alicia. I was a happy-go-lucky person. I was, you know, had a lot of friends, both in the service and Hollywood, period. And it was like, okay, who, are, who is this? Who is this person that goes from this bubbly, um, energetic person to someone who doesn't even want to um, see the light of day? Alicia's PTSD wasn't the worst of her problems. But I'd been placed on medical hold. Um, I'm a wounded warrior. But I'd been um, diagnosed with TBI. Um, I um, had a, a, uh, um, a spinal injury. Um, I um, had loss of um, hearing in my uh, left side. I had tumors um, and still do. Um, um, on, on the left side of my body. Her injuries made working nearly impossible. For months and months, Alicia says she waited for her retirement and disability to come through. So all of a sudden, I'm not getting paid anything, nor do I have the ability to work. Um, everything just started piling up and piling up. And I lost my home, I lost my car, and, and lost my dignity, lost, lost everything. And my family didn't know anything, and um, I didn't tell them because 
what can they do? I was living in my car. I'd, I'd rented a car because it was horrific. The streets of LA were a dangerous place for me at night, and I was being harassed and chased. And I can know what it's like to get to the point where you no longer want to live. Alicia had been living in her car for nearly a year when Oprah Winfrey got wind of her story. Oh, 6.45. Woke up because I kind of got a little bit cold, so I turned the car on, got some heat. I'm about to go to um, office store, go to my storage unit, try to get my resume and everything together, go and search for some jobs today. I hear at one point you had housing and you gave it up voluntarily. Is that true? You had housing, you gave it up voluntarily. You gave up the room to a mother and her three children. After I filmed that show, I had to make that phone call to my family. They had to hear from me and, they, and, and, and hear everything that had been going on, the IUD um, attacks and blasts that I was involved in, um, the reason why my back is out of line. Um, I, wanted to t I wanted to be the ones to tell them that, hey, mom, um, you know, I've been raped in the military. I've had to deal with um, a lot of different things. I've had multiple rapes. So it's hard to let your parents know that. and. I don't know, sorry, I get, em I get emotional. Um, because I think that, um, sorry. Alicia was able to get off the streets with the help of family friend, Cheryl Menendez, but the effects of Alicia's injuries and her PTSD remained. I knew something was wrong because she was not the same. Um, a lot of fear, a lot of reclusiveness. Um, and when I would talk to her about what happened, she would always cut me off. She didn't want me to know really what, what took place. I was invited to go to this camp in California. And I think people don't realize that I didn't want anyone to feel sorry for me. I wanted to get on my own two feet. I wanted to make my own money. I, I hate handouts to this day, and that's probably half my problem. I, 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 I want you to help me up. If you help me up, then I can, you know, fly to friendly skies. For Alicia, that help came from an unexpected place. I was invited to go to this camp in California. When I first met Alicia, I was sitting at the head of the classroom there, like the professor, you know, and all my troopers came in. Uh, on that day, I think there were nine or something like this. And all of a sudden, I realized that just off to my left in the center of the room there, there is a creature sitting there with a hoodie on, all wrapped up in jackets, dark glasses. She couldn't talk to the other people. She couldn't interact. She couldn't, um, certainly wouldn't interact with me. And I made excuses to ask certain questions and down the line so that Alicia was in line. She has to be asked this question. And those early questions were barely responded to, it at, if at all. So I went to work. You want to kind of quiet things down, because he'll get any any horse will get will get exuberant so don't don't go out in front now let him go on around and you're going to try to get him to go in that box and then you're going to step in front and get him to stop watch him you got him going just go to your left go to your left turn around turn around get out in front so you stop him get out in front get out in front get out in front good girl okay so you did that now the next one won't be so easy get through those cones. Hearing him talk about 
the horses and, and training wild horses in this program called um, Join Up, I began to realize how horses and my PTSD were two and the same. She became a, a real target for me in that particular group uh, because I viewed the potential for extreme change there if I could get it right. As Alicia began running through Monty's join up exercises, a visible transformation began to take place. It's the program for me because horses have this flight mentality, and that's what I characterize myself with. And um, to teach them and reprogram them to be, you know, I guess again domesticated is something that I identify with. Alicia agreed to stay one extra day, and you couldn't stop her from talking. And she was the most exuberant, outgoing, um, happy-go-lucky, fun-filled uh, participant that you could ever imagine. It was day and night. <laughs> Get out of the way, Monty Robert! <laughs> and I finally found something that could almost immediately erase all the pain and the suffering that I was feeling all those years. And um, within an hour, I was a totally different person. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it, got it. walk away, walk away. Add a girl, add a girl. Go on, don't look back. That a girl! And let me tell you this, I'm surprised she got on a horse. With her obsessive compulsive behavior, to me, a horse would have been dirty. And I said to her, she says, I know, and it was just something so different. So, but it's an animal. It wasn't a human being. To me, it's sweet because, you know, horses are beautiful creatures. And I've always been told, oh, well, you couldn't have gone through this. You're too pretty. You're too beautiful. And to see these beautiful creatures who have been, um, you know, a lot of times abused and, and, and mistreated, and to see how they come back to a place of reconnection and bonding lets me know that, okay, well, I can, I can recover from this. I can become a, the old me, um, the new old me. Recently, Monty invited Alicia to return to Santa Inez for another three-day session to help him reach out to a new group of veterans. It's so awesome to see myself in someone else, the person, oh, I'm not going to leave me alone. I just want to, you know, and then see that shell open up and to see how they transform. It's so beautiful to watch yourself in someone else. When you're here, you don't feel like a victim. You feel like a victor. Her problems are not over. But once you have been abused like Alicia was abused, it'll be with you the rest of your life. She didn't believe that. And I think that her first impression was you fight it off, you kick them in the teeth, and you get on with it, you'll be fine. And that doesn't work. You can't fight through these things. You have to think through these things. And I think Alicia is now on a, on a very healthy and positive track uh, to think through her problems. There's something so soothing or relational uh, that people have with animals. I mean, they don't judge you. They don't look at what you have on. They don't care how much money you have. They don't care what your level of education is. It is unconditional love. Three years, you don't start measuring success. It, the horses that we see traumatized and, and caused to be remedial uh, because of abuse, they never forget it. But you can mask it over with patterns of good behavior. 
And that's the same with vets. They, they're not going to forget the trauma they went through. Their positive behavior outweighs it if you do a really good job. But don't think they lost it. It's still there. And just one experience can put you back to square one with a horse or with a veteran. Do you think I forgot the beatings my father gave me? Hell no. They started when I was four years old, and I'm 76. But it doesn't need to be that I act upon them or that I allow them to consume me. I can overcome that. I can rise above that. And my veterans can too, 